Have you ever pondered what makes a question powerful? Let's rewind to ancient Greece, where the philosopher Socrates turned the simple act of asking into an art form. He believed that the key to wisdom wasn't in knowing the answers, but in questioning everything. This was the birth of the Socratic method, a way of seeking truth through persistent probing questions. Rather than teach his students what to think, Socrates opened their minds to the world of possibilities that lay in the unexplored terrain of thought. But his philosophy didn't stop at questioning the world around him. Socrates also emphasized the importance of self-knowledge. He reasoned that understanding oneself was the first step to understanding the world. For him, wisdom wasn't about accumulating facts or information, but about deep introspective exploration. And so, in the spirit of Socratic wisdom, we are left with the profound thought, I know that I am intelligent because I know that I know nothing. From the shores of Greece, we sail to ancient China, where a man named Confucius shaped a culture. This sage, born in the 6th century BC, gave us teachings that weave an intricate tapestry of wisdom, placing great emphasis on respect, morality, and the importance of family. Confucius believed that each person had a specific role to play in society, and by fulfilling these roles with integrity and respect, harmony could be achieved. He taught that kindness should be the guiding principle in one's life, a concept he called Ren. He also stressed Li, the importance of rituals and traditions in maintaining social order. But perhaps the cornerstone of Confucian teachings is the concept of Xiao, or filial piety. This underscores the profound respect and duty children owe to their parents, a principle that still resonates in many Asian cultures today. Truly Confucius reminds us that in a country well-governed, poverty is something to be ashamed of. Back to the cradle of Western philosophy, we encounter Plato, a student with his own extraordinary ideas. Plato, a disciple of Socrates, had a profound impact on the philosophical landscape with his vision of a world of ideas or forms. He proposed that the material world around us is just a shadowy representation of a higher realm of perfect, unchanging forms. This theory of forms was Plato's way of wrestling with the problem of change and permanence. If everything in the world is constantly changing, he pondered, how can we have stable knowledge of anything? His answer, by accessing the world of perfect forms through our intellect. Plato also had a vision for an ideal society with a ruling class of philosopher kings. He believed that those who have seen the truth of the world of forms would be best suited to guide the state. Plato's realm of ideas continues to challenge us to question, what is reality? From the world of ideas, we step into the world of observation with Aristotle. A student of Plato himself, Aristotle had a rather different approach to philosophy. Instead of dwelling in the realm of abstract ideas, he chose to keep his feet firmly on the ground, observing the natural world around him. Aristotle was a man of many disciplines, ranging from biology to ethics, politics to poetics. His thirst for knowledge and understanding was insatiable. He believed that all knowledge comes from our senses, our interactions with the world around us. This practical approach to philosophy set him apart from his teacher Plato and laid the groundwork for much of the scientific method we use today. His contributions to various fields of knowledge, such as his treatise on ethics, Nicomachean ethics, and his work on logic, continued to echo through the halls of academia. Aristotle, a man of many disciplines, taught us that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Fast forward to the 18th century, where Immanuel Kant pondered the nature of right and wrong. Kant, an influential German philosopher, had a unique perspective on morality. Like a compass guiding us through the complexities of life, he believed morality was a matter of duty, of doing the right thing simply because it is right, not because of any rewards or punishments that might follow. In the grand scheme of Kant's philosophy, he proposed what is known as the categorical imperative. This rule, in essence, asks us to act only according to those maxims that we would want to become universal laws. So, if we consider telling a lie to avoid a tough situation, Kant would argue against it. He'd say, regardless of the situation, lying is always wrong. Why? Because if everyone lied, trust would crumble and society would falter. With Kant, we learn that morality is not the doctrine of how we may make ourselves happy, but of how we may make ourselves worthy of happiness.